her the breeds of cattle. Then, terminologies used in cattle. First one, bull. Bull is an adult male cattle. An adult male cattle is called a bull. Then, a cow is an adult female cattle. Calf is a young one of a cattle. The young cattle is called a calf. Then, a heifer is a growing female up to our first calving, like a teenager in human being. So, a growing female cattle that is up to having giving birth, like up to a reproductive stage, is called heifer. Then we have the bull calf. Bull calf is a young male cattle. Then we have the heifer calf, a young female cattle. Then we have the steer. Steer is a castrated male cattle. Then the ox. Ox is a castrated female cattle. Serving is the act of mating in cattle. Mating in cattle or coitus is called serving in cattle. Then calving is parturition. The act of giving birth in cattle is called calving. Then the meat of cattle is beef. Meat of cattle is called beef. Then dairy cattle is a cattle that is kept, kept for milk production. Dairy cattle is a cattle kept for milk production, while reef cattle is a cattle reared for meat production. Head is a group of cattle. Head. The group of cattle is called head. head. Then pulled is cattle without horn. Pulled. When you say it's a pulled cattle, it means the cattle is without horn. Then horned. Is a cattle that has horns. Then umph. When you say the cattle is umph, is a cattle that has hump at the back. Then when you say it's umpless, the cattle is without hump. Now we're talking about the characteristics of the West African breed of cattle. Characteristics of West African breed of cattle. One, they are very hardy. Then they have greater tolerance to heat and humidity. They have tolerance, they are tolerant to some diseases, e.g., trypanosomiasis, that is a sickness, sickness caused by excessive fly. They can withstand stress and travel long distance without water. That's another characteristic of them. They can go long distance withstanding stress and they can go without water. Then they mature late. They are compact or bulky shaped body. They are red for meat and milk production. They have powerful shoulder for use as drought animals so you can put load on them because they have strong shoulder. Then they have slow growth rate and body weight. They have slow growth rate and body weight. We're talking about the economic importance of cattle. One, for their meat and milk production. Then they provide eye and skin for us, for our leather. They are, they pro, you can also get blood meal or bone meal production for animal feed. They are blood, you can use their blood to prepare blood meal. Then they are bone too, to pre prepare bone meal for your animal's feed. Then another impo economic importance is that their, cattle, their dung can be used for manure, cattle dung for manure. Then they provide employment and income to people. So people work as, like the full and ease, they raise the cattle all around. So it provides their job and a source of income for them. Then it's also a source of revenue to the country, some countries that have them. So it's a source of revenue, source of income, source of generating fund. Then it is also used for religious purposes as well as festivals. They are used in some festivals. They use cartoons in festivals. Then the last but not the least important is that it is used for research work and educational purposes. And use your class to carry out different research and for educational purposes. Now we're talking about feeding in cartoon. Talking about the feed of cartoon. One, their feed must be a balanced diet, must contain in the right proportion all the classes of food that they need for their growth and milk production. Then they, are, they feed mainly on roughages, that is, they feed on grasses and legumes. 
And the common grasses being fed on by cattle include elephant grass, guinea grass, giant star grass, and so on. Then the leguminous plant that they feed on include the Centrosema species and the Calopogonium species. Dairy cattle should be given more concentrates for their milk production. So animals that you are raising for milk production, you feed them more than those that you are raising for just their beef. Then other preserved feed like hay, silage and straw can be fed on the cattle, especially during dry season. You get the, the grasses, you cut them, dry them, preserve them for during dry season because there will be no grasses around. Then zero grazing, that is what is called soil, soilage, can be practiced. That is, that is the situation whereby the grasses are cut and taken to the animal. You don't have to graze them around. They are in a place and you bring the grasses to them. Also, they can also be take around. That's pastoral nomadism, whereby you move the animal from one place to the other in search of pasture and water. And that's what we have the full do. That's pastoral nomadism. Now, we'll be talking about the last aspect of cattle, and that will be common diseases of cattle. And the first is the foot and mouth disease of cattle. Then we have the rinderpest disease, anthrax, tuberculosis, trypanosomiasis, and red water fever. So those are the common diseases that cattle do have. And these diseases should be prevented through the use of appropriate drugs and vaccines for the animal. So those are the common diseases that you can find in cattle. So we will now move on to talk about goats. Goats is a whole owned small ruminants that is that belongs to the family bovidae of the genus Kappa. Goat is red for its meat, the milk, its eyes and skin. And I have said earlier in the class that goat meat is the richest of all the meat produced by animals, including that of man. Goat meat is the richest. Then the breeds of goats, we have Shokoto Red, Bono Red, West African Long Leg Goats, we have the West African Dwarf Goats, we have Bantu, we have Alfine, we have Samir, Kano Brown, Bauchi Type, we have the Tongan Bog, we have Nubia, Boa, Anglo, Nandi, East African small goats, and Angola. So they are, there is quite a number of them, various breeds of goats. Then the terminologies used in goats, we have buck or billy. That is an adult male goat. When you hear buck or billy, it's an adult male goat. Then when you hear doe or nanny, that's an adult female goat. A kid is a young or baby goat. Wild weather is a castrated male goat. Killing is the act of giving birth in goats. Then chevron is the meat of goats. Just as pork is the meat of pig, chevron is the meat of goats. Then the general characteristics of goats, first is that they are tough and hardy animals that can survive on favorable environmental conditions. They, have, they are small-bodied animals. They can produce kids twice a year. That is, their pasturation power occur twice in a year. Then they are reared for their skin, meat, milk, and fiber. Male goats are the ones that are often bred. Then both male and female goats do have horns. They are very inquisitive animals. So that when you try to scare them away from a place, they will always want to come back. So that's why you refer to stubborn goats. When you want to refer to somebody that's stubborn, you have goats because the goats tend to be stubborn because it's very inquisitive. Then they are mostly reared. Goats are mostly reared on the extensive system of management. We've talked about that earlier. Extensive system in the sense that they are not caged, they are not catered for, they just go on their own to fend for themselves, look for food, look for shelter and all that. So they are mostly reared on the extensive system of management. Then they can browse on many forage plants. Hence, the cost of production of goats is very cheap. They go in search of food on their own. So cost of production of goats is very cheap. 
then their gestation period is between 145 to 154 days. That's about four to five months. Gestation period, the period of pregnancy in goats, is about four to five months. And that is why it is possible for goats to produce kids twice a year. Now, the systems of rearing goats, you have the extensive system, the semi-intensive system, and the intensive system. Extensive system being that the goats are left in their home to fend for food, shelter, and all that. Then semi-intensive system, the goats are caged at night and released in the morning to go fend for food. Then they are given a little food, although they still go around to search for their food. Then the intensive system is whereby you house the goats fully. The farmer is the one responsible for the feeding, the shelter, and everything of the goats. So the goats don't move around. So those are the three systems of rearing goats. Now, we're talking about health and sanitation of goats. The goat's pens and their stores should be washed and cleaned daily. Sick animals should be isolated and treated urgently so as not to infect other healthy goats. Then dead animals should be buried. Goats should be dewormed on a regular basis. They should also be dipped in solution containing chemicals to get rid of ectoparasites. Rotational grazing should be practiced to avoid parasite buildup. So don't make your goats rotate on just a spot. Rotate the places where the grounds they will graze. Then their environment should be clean at all times so that you can have healthy goats and you have a good yield at the end of the process.